Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop and today we are going to be failing spectacularly. Let's dive in. Last time I attempted this, I had a really beautiful piece of curly white oak. Um, I no longer have that piece because I ended up using it in the box and there was not enough left. So today we're actually be making it with regular white oak. And this is a uh, quarter sawn, so you'll see some of the rays coming through here. I have this board I want to cut in half to get down to about quarter inch thick pieces. Uh, I want the sides to be around a quarter inch thick. The actual thickness doesn't really matter that much as long as they're close to it. And so this three quarter inch board will allow me to get actually pieces that are a little thicker than a quarter inch and then I can plane them down exactly what I want. Having a large Rubo style frame saw makes it very quick and efficient to uh, resaw larger, thicker pieces. And this one came out very, very well. So this will be enough for me to get six pieces out of it. Why six and not five? Because it's a pentagon. Uh, six because I know I'm going to be breaking one. Um, or I'm going to be messing up the joint on one and I'd like to have one in spare. So I'm going to joint up the edges, get them nice and true, and then we can rip these down to the correct uh, width of board. And that is going to end up being the height of the bowl. The width of the pieces will be about four inches-ish. I'm, I'm not making anything specific, so I can cut them to whatever I want. Uh, the board has a slight knot in one end, and that is going to be my leftover piece that if I need it, then we'll use it. Um, but if not, then not. <laughs> yeah, with them roughly uh, cut to size, then we can come back and plane them down to thickness. So I'm putting a mark on here at a quarter inch all the way around the board, and I'm going to plane them down until we get to that mark. Um, I could have brought out the scrub plane for some of this, but it was close enough. I just found the five and a half or the six to, to work very well. Um, this one is a little bit difficult because, of course, with white oak, the grain train ch changed halfway direction uh, along there. So, um, yeah, oh well. Now I need to figure out um, what angle do I want these to be at. And I picked a rough angle if I want the bowl to be splayed around that. This is a leftover piece from the last time I attempted it, and so I tried to get something close to that particular angle. This whole process is just an experimentation, and so my initial thought is I was going to cut each of these pieces um, at the right shape, uh, and then I would come and cut the angle in on them and tra transfer them back. But uh, I started thinking, you know, this is kind of like making a uh, crown molding, and uh, it's, it's a compound corner. And for crown molding, you use a miter saw. Now, I haven't used this miter saw very often, but I thought, let's give this one a try. The trick to it is you actually put the board at an angle, and then you cut at an angle, so you actually get a compound cut with one piece. So I put this screw in, and then I put another one back here to support the board. And with those two, that basically gave me another fence down below that would hold it in place. And so with the screws in place, I could then push the board against the screw and the fence and clamp it down in that, and that holds it at the angle. So when I cut, it cuts it at a compound angle. Now, the, the fence is actually set up to cut at a pentagonal angle. Uh, this particular one is set up so you actually choose the number of sides you want in the frame, and you cut it. Uh, it doesn't give you actual degrees of angle. It says, you know, 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And uh, you, so I have it set on 5, and it Here's cuts one. pentagons, which is kind of cool. Uh, they did this back before there was a lot of math in school, so uh, that someone could actually just cut it. I need a frame that has six sides, so I'm going to set it on the 6, and we cut. And I put a mark on the fence at the bottom, on the, the, the bed at the bottom, so that I always came to the same place. They don't have to be absolutely precisely the same length, because I can do a little bit of trim up in the future. Um, but I was actually rather impressed. They came out really, really, really close, well within, and within tolerances. Now, I don't use a miter box very often. As a matter of fact, this is the first time I've used this one in, what, three or four years. Uh, I don't like using the miter box unless I absolutely have to. It's just one of those things that um, I, I just prefer to use a line and, and cut to it. It's faster, easier, and uh, makes things simpler. But if you ever have any problems with uh, um, hands shaking or control or you just want it done so right, point, miter box is nice. And particularly for something like this where I'm cutting at some weird and crazy angle, trying to hit this angle with a, uh, with a saw would be a little more difficult. I would end up staying a little ways away from it and then planing back to it. But then this gives us the angles of the box, and I can kind of see, yeah, that's looking kind of like a pentagon. And everything is coming together so far, except for at this point, I should realize that it's not quite as broad an angle as it, is, it should be, but it's close enough, right? 
<laughs> now, it's a very, very important here to mark all of them. And on each piece of tape, I have the number for that board. At one side, I have P for pins, and the other side, I have a T for tails. And then I'm going to come back through and actually put a mark on either one to tell, hey, number two is on this side, and number one is on the other side, or it would be two and uh, four, because um, it would be every other. And then I need to actually start cutting the dovetails. Now, compound dovetails seem crazy difficult, and they are very, very easy to overthink, but you have to just understand, rather than using a square, you're going to use a bevel gauge. And uh, for setting the depth of cut, um, you don't want to be actually setting it with a marking gauge because it's not off of the corner, uh, off of the end, it's off of the corner. So I find it much easier to actually put the board on there hold it down in, and then that use a knife to, to mark here, exactly where one board intersects with the other, and you get a perfect we're line go, that actually works that very, very well. The next thing I need to do is figure out what is the angle of the pins, and that is going to match the angle from the outside point to the top, or the outside point to the bottom. And I'm going to set one marking gauge at that. And then when it comes to the actual tip of the dovetails, that can be whatever I want it to be, just like normal dovetails. Um, it doesn't really matter what the angle of the tail is. So I'm going to just go ahead and cut it, and then I will make the pins match whatever the tails are. Laying out these ended up being a little more difficult than I imagined because I need some space at the bottom for the groove for the bottom of the bowl. I'm going to put a uh, I'm going to put a, a bottom into it, and so I need the dovetail pins uh, pins not to run into it. And I ended up laying them out three or four times and then eyeballing and then laying out a couple more times until I finally got a layout that looks very well. Each one of these will have two tails. Now I need to make sure that the beam on this is laying on the end of the board and not the fence laying on the side of the board because I need it to be at the end angle of the end, not the angle of the side. Seems complicated, but you're basically imagining you're going to have this other side of the, the, the pins board running into this tailboard, and so I need it to be on that same plane that the other board would continue off. Whereas with a square, it's really easy because it just continues off square to the face and uh, along the end grain line. Next, we can start cutting it. And the nice thing about this is it's just like tails, other than the fact that you're cutting at a weird angle and there is no way to actually hold them at a compound angle so you're going vertical. So I lay the saw on, so the saw is running at the same angle as the end of the board. And at that point, it's just cutting a tail. And I cut down at an angle that looks appropriate and clean. Um, don't overthink it. <laughs> Maybe sometime in the future, I'll actually do a video dedicated to uh, compound dovetails. I've done several on angled dovetails where you have one angle in one degree, and those are relatively simple. That you still use a square, but you use a bevel for one of the two angles. Whereas in this one, you use a bevel gauge for both of the angles. It's also very important to mark off what is the waste and what are you cleaning. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, it's very easy to, uh, to mess that up. And so I'm cutting down here and then realizing, wait a second, I've got to, um, I'm cutting at this angle and I need to be cutting down slope. And so I turn the board around so I can cut down slope on the other one. And uh, it looks crazy, but once you put one of them together, it's like, oh, uh, it's just a simple dovetail. I just happen to be cutting at a slight angle. So we can chop them out like normal. Um, Taking out the waste in between the tails or in between the pins is a little more difficult because when you're chopping from one side, you're chopping with the grain, and you're chopping from the other side, you're chopping against the grain. And so that ends up being um, a little bit iffy, uh, but as long as you, you're careful with it, you can you, it comes out pretty well. I'm going to be using one of the boards as a chisel guide, and I thought this would work out really well, but I found out I really didn't use it much. So after doing the, the first set, I, I didn't use it anymore. Again, I'm going to stay away from the line, and the side where I'm going with the grain, I'm going to go almost all the way through. I'm going to go within a sixteenth inch of the other side and get it very, very, very close. Then I can flip it over and chop in from the other side and just basically break off this piece along that line. And most of these came out really well, but this one, of course, the one I videoed, um, was really horrible. Um, almost all of them really looked very, very sharp, um, but this one didn't. So I'll show you the mistakes. Next, we're going to come in with a file and clean it all up because there's going to be a lot of little burrs and fuzzes on there. We want to make sure it's nice and smooth. And at this point, it looks weird. It looks like some odd optical illusion, um, but that's the way it should be. 
I found marking the the pins actually really easy as long as I put them in the vise and dropped it down just a little bit to hold in the tails. And then I could come in and line them up just like I normally would. I can use that same square I had to draw down the side to show this. And this is basically just a square for whatever this angle is because it needs to match with that. The pins need to slide in and the sides of the pins need to be parallel with the top and bottom of it because it's going to be sliding in just like a dovetail. So just like with normal dovetails, the pins have to be parallel to the sides of the board. Once more, mark the waist. Yeah, you're gonna mess up, and you don't want that to be the reason, so you cut on the right side of the board. And with this one, I'm just going to cut from corner to corner and eyeball it, and then I'll rotate the board around and I'll cut from corner to corner on the other, because it's very important at this time that I be right on that line. I want to be uh, precisely where I want to be. I'm not eyeballing it. On the tail side, I could kind of eyeball it. Um, on this one, I found it was a little bit easier to come in from the, the bad angle side and cut really, really close to it, but just cut vertically here, not cut at an angle. And then I'm going to come in from the other side and trim it back too. And that allows me to play connect the dot. And I've got a much cleaner cut on these ones. And this is the procedure I did in, in the future. So this allowed me to um, basically play connect the dots from one line to the other. And I got a very clean surface running all the way across that. So yeah, that's the proper method. Then we can come back with a file, clean up all the little burrs and fuzzes. And theoretically, at this point, it should go together, right? These should just slide see. right down into place. And oh, 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 it did, it did. Um, yeah, it needed a little bit of cleanup. You can see I was pushing on one side. And because they're at a weird angle, um, yeah, it needed a little bit more um, clean. It was one side that was rubbing a bit more than the other. And you just got to kind of play with it and find out where is it actually rubbing. And usually using a fine file just to do a little bit of detail work is all it's need. You don't have to come in and, and take off a huge amount. Um, usually bringing in the chisel is where you start to have issues and problems with it. And like that, we've got one set of dovetails. Now we need to do it four more times because there's five corners in this. And each one of these will have tails on one side and pins on the other so that they actually end up coming together. And uh, yeah, so I turned off the camera and I just zinned out for a while and started doing more work on it. And uh, it was around this point that I started putting things together and I was realizing, wait a second, um, these angles aren't lining up quite the way I want them to. It, it's not quite pentagonal. And then I get to this one and realize, wait a second, um, uh, where did I go wrong? And I wasn't quite sure. Maybe it, maybe I just need to stretch it. Maybe I just need to, to twist it. And so I tried pulling them apart a little bit. Maybe I can finagle it in again and jam them into place. Uh, but it was just so far off, it wasn't going to work. It's not a pentagon. It's between a square and a pentagon. And, uh, hmm. Okay, so where did I go wrong? Now I got to figure this out because um, everything math-wise seems like it should work. So I brought this back in and I thought, let's let's check this. And that's the angle of the box, but the angle of the saw is way over there. So that that should be correct because it's on the five. And if I move it over to this, that gives me the appropriate angle that I should be cutting pentagonal sides at. So I thought, well, maybe I'm just going to cut some scrap wood and make sure maybe something's wrong with my saw. Um, maybe there's something off on that. So I grabbed a, a scrap piece of wood and I cut this vertically just trying to make a pentagonal frame. Uh, cut up five little pieces here and uh, we'll, we'll put those together on a strip of tape and, and, and see what comes up with that because maybe, maybe that's wrong, right? But uh, when I put all five of these together, um, it actually comes together and makes a, a perfect pentagon. And so, um, that's not the case. Put them on a little piece of tape just to make sure, strapped them together, and, and sure enough, it actually turns out making a pentagon. It doesn't make whatever weird shape this is. So then I thought, well, let's take these boards over there. Um, maybe I messed up on that, so I'm actually going to bring the scraps over and test those out. Um, maybe maybe something's wrong on this. So I set this in place and put it into there, and sure enough, it it's, it's exactly where it should be. That's the right angle and that's the right angle um and so they should match up like that to make it but then i had to turn them and flip them to the other side and so i don't know what i went wrong because that's the right angle but then when i rotate them around for the dovetails to connect 
that's not the right angle. So somewhere in there, there is a problem, and I would love to know uh, what it is. So if you have any ideas, throw it down in the comments, and uh, yeah, it's a long ways off from there. I don't know what it was, but uh, someday I'm going to get this done, because this is one of these these confusing things that I want to wrap my brain around, because I love a good challenge, and um, this one this one's a good challenge for sure. So yeah, even when I mess up, it's a lot of fun, because I'm working in the wood shop. <laughs> So years in the making, and I still don't exactly know what I did wrong. I mean, I made it just like I would be doing crown molding, and I thought that would work, um, but my angles are off. And so I have to go back to the drawing board and figure out um, where exactly did I go wrong and why did it go wrong. So if you have any ideas why this doesn't look like this, even though they were cut at the same angle, I would love to hear that. <laughs> but I like to show times where I make mistakes and things don't come out the way I planned. A lot of times I have to try something three or four times until it actually comes out. And that's perfectly normal. Everyone out there does that. Even the best woodworkers fail from time to time. So when you see someone making something perfect and they show a video on it, realize that there are probably some other times where they didn't. We're all human and we all make mistakes and we all have places we need to learn. So yeah, let's work on that together. And if you happen to know what I did wrong, um, let me know. I'd love to hear that. Please put that down in the comments down below because not only does that help me learn, it also helps the channel grow. It helps us get in front of more people and I really like that because that means the channel grows. We are really, 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 really close to 100,000 subscribers. So uh, if you wanna push us over that, thank you. <laughs> also, if you hit the like, share, subscribe, that helps out as well. But if you wanna go even farther, there are a bunch of names over here. Those are all of the fantastic, wonderful, benevolent, and gorgeous people over on Patreon. Without patrons, we wouldn't exist. You guys are what keep us going. Without you supporting us, we wouldn't be here. We are completely supported by you, the viewer. So if you can help out in any way with that, that means more than I can say. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Okay, it's not a square and it's not a pentagon. So it has like 4.2 sides. Does that make it a squentagon?